All right, so chapter six talks about communications, the different types of communication that we're going to have, and then also the different types of guest services that we're going to offer. Okay, um, communication with the guests, but also communication with each department. And so towards the end of the chapter, there is a section of how the front office communicates with each department within the within the hotel, and why it's important to have that that open communication. Okay. The whole hotel has to work together um, to make everything uh, to make everything run smoothly. Okay, so we're going to go through each one of these points here um, of how we communicate uh, with the guests um, primarily. Okay. All right. So our guest communications. It's important for us to anytime the guest has an issue. Anytime the guest has a special request, it's important for us to listen to that and make note of that, okay? Um, and so what are some, we've talked about some special requests already that, in the last chapter that we've already, the guests will make, but what are some guest complaints they might have? It's too noisy, their neighbors might be too noisy. What else? There's an item left in your room. That item could be anything, okay? What else? Hair. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I'm, I'm okay with, actually, you know what? After wearing that wig on Thursday at the bed making competition, um, I can understand why there's hair everywhere. Like, I was picking hair out of my mouth for like days. It's so gross. How do y'all do that? I don't, yes, ma'am. In which, when the rooms that we were making the no, beds in, yeah, because they hadn't cleaned those rooms yet. Oh. All they done was strip the beds. Yeah, so they had it. You noticed even the one room, the double room, had the ironing board still out. So they literally just came in and stripped those beds and the, let us do that. They went in later and cleaned those rooms, got them ready for it. I'm pretty sure they remade the beds that were already made. Don't want to, you know, just in case. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely. That's one of the first things I check when I go into a, a room, is I check the bathroom for hair. Now, I get it that you can't be perfect 100% of the time. So for me, as an industry professional, one to another, I will just go and say, hey, can you go clean my, re-clean my bathroom? And it's no big deal, right? But if I request my bathroom to be clean and it doesn't get clean, that's when I have an issue, okay? Um, and so again, as from one professional to another, as a courtesy, you're bringing that to their attention um, without like blasting them, without going, bless you, without going on Facebook and Instagram and posting pictures. You don't want to do that uh, because sometimes somebody is going to be in your hotel and there's going to be hair in your bathroom, in your hotel. And so you would hopefully want them to have that professional courtesy as well, um, just to bring it to your attention. That way, we can identify it as an issue before somebody who is going to yell and make a big deal out of it is, gets involved, okay? Um, so we definitely want to have that. The front desk typically is the face of the hotel. We are the ones that have a lot more of the face-to-face -face communication with the guests, okay? In a full-service hotel, if you have a concierge, well, then most people will go to that concierge to get information. But a lot of people, whether and especially if they're a guest that's not used to staying at a hotel that has a concierge, they may go directly to the front desk. Because if you go to a select service hotel, that's typically the person you go to ask um, for information. Okay. All right. So we just watched that video. Um, I will go ahead and post this as a separate link in the module in Canvas. Um, if you want to watch it independently on your own or if you want to share it with your family and friends um, about what not to do or share it with your team members at work about what not to do. Um, all right, we have a transaction file, okay? A lot of hotels call this a logbook, okay? It can be digital. How many of you that work in hotels have digital logbooks where, like, you're, like, where you record the things that happen with guests throughout the day? Okay, you do? What's that? So you send us emails, okay? So you document it that way? Um, how do y'all do it at your hotel? Okay. So you have a red book, you have like a book that you write in. Okay, perfect. 
So it can be a handwritten book or it can be a digital copy. Um, but essentially what we need to do is we need to have a transactional file of everything that's happened during the shift. If Mr. Smith calls down to the, the front office and says there's a hair in his bathroom and he wants his bathroom clean, we need to make a note of that. If uh, there's a light bulb out in a room, if the batteries don't work in a remote control, we want to make notes of all of these things that, that guests call down to have concerns with. If a guest is in town or is in our hotel for an anniversary, and you know we find that out at checkout or at check-in, but we don't want to send up a bottle of champagne and strawberries when they check in at three o'clock in the afternoon. We want to send it up maybe in the evening. So we'll do a little note in the transaction file. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith are here celebrating their 50th anniversary. I want to let's send an amenity up, and so the person that then comes in and, and takes over the shift. Um, can read that transaction file and figure out, did the pillows, or sorry, did the hair get cleaned up? Did the light bulb get replaced? Did, the, did somebody actually go up and replace the batteries? And so when those things have been addressed, then somebody comes in and marks them off or marks out like, what they did to address that and resolve that issue. Um, so that way we can look and see, oh my gosh, Nobody ever went up to clean the bathroom for Mr. Smith. We need to make sure we go do that right now or follow up to make sure that it actually get, did get done and just wasn't documented. So we can call Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, um, thank you for letting us know you had a concern uh, with your restroom. Did everything get um, corrected to your satisfaction? And that one phone call could say, yes, it did. And that just means somebody didn't follow up with what they did to, to correct it. Okay. Good, absolutely. So we want to make sure those things are addressed. The worst thing that can happen is that somebody calls down and it doesn't get addressed. Um, a lot of times now as everything is digitalized, um, our property management systems are all kind of communicate together. Um, there is the possibility that you can actually send messages to a housekeeper to say, hey, go clean this room um, before your next room, go address this issue. And so we can, we can address them. And then there's a digital, um, digital trail of when that person has corrected the issues, okay? But the biggest thing, there's no possible way that one person can be, high, can be behind the front desk for 24 hours a day, okay? And so that's where we use this file to make sure that everything that has gone wrong has been corrected, okay? All right, information directory. Go ahead and take a few moments. Write about three to five things on a list, or maybe as th many things as you can think of, that would be in a hotel information di directory. Think about that book that you find in a hotel room, that binder. What information should be in the hotel information directory? And then compare your list to your neighbor to see if you have any similarities and differences. All right. 
So let's go through this list that's provided, um, and then let's see if we have any that we can add to it. All right, so first one, information directory contains the following information. Area maps, how many of y'all had area maps? Okay, what things are you looking for on the maps? Local attractions. Local attractions, what else? Restaurants. Restaurants, good, anything else? Sorry, I heard something over here. Museums, okay, good. Excellent. What about tele taxi telephone numbers? Anybody list that one? Okay. Who uses taxi? Why do you say it so derogatorily? <laughs> that's okay. Some people still use the taxis, and so that's important to have that information. Just because you're not going to use that information doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be there. Absolutely. But you're right. Uber, with, again, with technology, things like that have become more and more... Um, Import, like more and more accessible. I had um, last year, 2018, I went to Nashville um, to run the Rock and Roll Marathon. I run a lot. Um, and I went to run the Rock and Roll Marathon and I stayed in Franklin. That's where I stayed, which is like 25, 30 minutes south of Nashville. That's where I stayed in 2017 because I loved the hotel. I was like, I'm going to go back to that hotel. Well, I realized as I was driving to the airport in my Uber, I didn't have my driver's license. So how am I going to rent a car? In, or no, first of all, I thought, I don't have my license. How am I going to check in to get on my flight? So I remembered, oh, my passport's in my office here at school. So I had my Uber driver bring me to school at 4 o'clock in the morning so I could run up here and get my passport so I could check into the flight. But then I'm thinking, well, how do I rent my car in Nashville? And so I was like, well, I just said, I text, I emailed a picture of my license to my boss up in Maine for my employment file. So I was like, oh, they can probably use that. No, they can't use that. Uh, it has to be a real, real ID. And, um, and so I didn't realize this until I was sitting in Nashville one day that my, my ID was still on the photocopier two doors down from my office. Um, so I could have gotten my ID, but regardless, I couldn't drive. And so I had to use taxis and Uber. Well, nobody in Nashville wanted to come down, and, or nobody in Franklin on, at 7 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday wanted to drive all the way to Nashville to drop me off to the race. And so I had like three times somebody accepted my ride, and then within a minute they declined it. And they, I guess when they figured out where I, was, where I was going, they declined the ride. And so I'm trying to think, how do I get to Nashville? How did I get there? I had to use a taxi. So they had that at the front desk. They had those. I was like, what taxi company do you recommend? And luckily, the taxi guy said, the operator said, if I had called five minutes later, there would have been no taxis available. Because they had just, a taxi had just dropped somebody off in Franklin. And they were able to pick me up to come back to Nashville. I was just like, oh, my gosh, thank you. Uber give you, like, Do you get receipts? Yeah, you do. You get emailed. I get mine through PayPal. Yeah, so I have my PayPal account att attached to my Uber. So, yeah. Um, all right, airline telephone numbers. Yes, no, anybody? No? Okay. Um, bank locations, that's definitely important, um, especially if people are traveling. Did y'all know? I don't know why this surprised me. Um, did y'all know you can use your ATM machine across the world? I didn't know. I didn't realize. I don't know why it doesn't make sense to me that you could do that. But when I was in Scotland, I had to get money out. So I put my ATM, my, my debit card in, and I put my, my transaction, my little PIN number in, and it gave me all the British pounds. And I was just like, this is amazing. Some will, some will. Some will, some Okay, that's good. We're migrating to a chip now, right? Yeah, uh-huh. Last time I went to Germany, I didn't have the chip yet. Yet, it, credit cards, bank nothing. I had to call my bank and had to send me money. Oh, wow, okay. Basically. They wouldn't do it. Okay, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, so I guess it does have the chips. I guess that makes more sense then. We were the last, I think, to really implement. Yeah. So I remember then I looked at my, my bank account like a couple days later. I was like, when did I pull $47.32 out of the ATM? And I was like, oh, that's the conversion. Which then, uh, to me, it was like, that's really cool because I don't know if you've ever traveled internationally and used those, those currency exchange places. Those fees are outrageous. And so now I'm like, dude, charge a dollar from Randolph Brooks as my foreign <laughs> transaction fee, and they automatically convert it. I was like, this is wonderful. So it's easier. Theater locations. So that might be grouped into attractions or entertainment, like, there's, like the Majestic Theater, or the Tobin Center, things like that. 
What about church locations? Yeah, sometimes. I'm the, the, I've gone to different things and I've looked at the book and there's been, you know, a couple of different churches. Uh, and again, now today, most everybody, this is their information file. This is their information book. They just type in churches nearby. Well, I think that would be depending on where you go to. If you go somewhere down in the Bible Belt, I guarantee you all the churches are going to be listed. Else, yeah, absolutely. Good point. Very good point. Shopping as well. I'd be you do shopping on their list. What about restaurants? Did all of y'all put restaurants on your list? Whether it's the restaurant for the hotel or the restaurant um, somewhere else. Absolutely. Special event schedule. That could definitely be something that, that can go in there. So if you know that you know there's a big taco festival going on, you might put that information and make it available to the guests so that they that they'll know. Um, the True downtown, I don't know if this, is, if this is like a brand standard for True, but um, the True downtown has like this board that the guests can write things on. So if they went to a restaurant, they can come back to the hotel and write the restaurant on the board. So other guests, so that's almost like a communal information directory um, that the guests can give feedback about places that they've been. So someone's saying they're like, oh, I want to go get Mexican food. And they're standing by the elevator, and they're just looking at this giant board of all these different recommendations that other guests have made. Um, so, yeah. Some also are digital. So I don't know if you noticed when we went to the Fairfield and the Spring Hill. On the Spring Hill side, um, there was these giant touchscreen TVs. And those were basically information guides. Um, it's all digitalized. A lot of hotels, too. I've seen also like a local magazine. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um a lot of hotels, too, will have what those brochure racks, and so people can go and get brochures about different attractions and different things that are happening. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different things we can do. It's also important for us at the front desk to have, like, maybe, like, a master list. So maybe not one that's going to go into the guest rooms, but at the front desk that we can do that. Um, how many of y'all are CTA certified? Certified Tourism Ambassadors. How many of you were at one point and you let it, rela and you let it lapse? That's okay. How many, How many were CTA certified, but then you let it lapse, you didn't renew it? That's okay. We'll get you renewed. Um, but that being a CTA certified, how many of you have no idea what I'm talking about? Okay, CTA is Certified Tourism Ambassadors. If you're in front office, or sorry, front office, that's the class we're in right now. If you are in um, Intro to Hospitality, you will get CTA certified this semester. Whether you're with me, Mr. McNair, or Mr. Vieira, um, you'll get CTA certified. Um, it's part of your class. You've paid for it. Um, and so I think Mr. Vieira's will be in November. Mine will be end of October. And Mr. McNair's will be middle of October. Um, yes, ma'am. I have the actual book from the CTA. Yeah. I have that. They've, kind of, they've gone away from the booklet, and they've done everything digitalized now at this point. Um, but uh, if I can, I can keep that in mind. I have a couple of copies in my office. If, if you need it, I have it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, anything else about information directories? Anything else was on your list that we didn't put up here? Yes, ma'am. Hospitals. Hospitals? Okay, good. Anybody else? All right, so numbers within the hotels. If you want to get in touch with in-room dining, if you want to get in touch with the restaurant, if you want to get in touch with the front desk, typically we just dial off the zero for the operator, but that typically will go to the front desk. But yeah, that's really important. Um, there was, where was I? San Francisco. I was at the Park 55. So uh, that's a brand. It was, a, it was an independent hotel that Hilton kind of bought. But because the park brand was so well known, they just kept the name. Um, and it was a very interesting hotel. It was a very large hotel. Um, and the breakfast was actually really good. I guess they have a lot of Asian population in that area. And so they had like like fried noodles and they had dim sum and they, I mean I was like yeah I'm loving this breakfast this is awesome um but they also had a digital in, uh information directory in there so it was basically an ipad in every single room and I could touch it and I could get directions to the nearest locations um it was I had specific to the hotel so I could touch the restaurant and see all the menus of the restaurant that were was in the hotel so it was kind of cool to, to have that digital and that it wasn't just like the old school book that was flipped. 
um, you just flip through. All right, reader boards. How many of you, raise your hands, know what a reader board is? Okay, excellent. So, Anna, tell us what a reader board is. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you don't know? Okay, sorry. How many of you do not know what a reader board is? Okay, cool. Sorry. So, a reader board, how many of you do know what a reader board is? Okay. Um, let's, okay, both of you go. Start with? It's where it shows your events that are um, happening at the hotel or close by, and it tells you locations and times. And stuff okay, like good. Anything to add? Right. So typically it's any kind of group or event that's happening in the hotel. So the average guest isn't going to use it. But if you have a group that's happening in-house, um, if there's different things that are happening, so let's see, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to the Tourism Council board meeting, and it's going to be the Wyndham Riverwalk Hotel. And so when I walk in, on their reader board, it's, going, it's usually down in the lobby, it's like a little TV screen, it might be a hand-printed, or it might be a printed uh, piece of paper, but somewhere in the lobby it will say, Tourism Council board meeting, and it'll give me the room location, okay? That's a reader board. So it gives me an idea of where I'm going. Sometimes they're digitalized, and they actually, I can say I'm going to this meeting, and it'll actually give me directions of how to get from where I am to where I need to go. Um, so technology has really increased that. Back in the day, I don't know what, that, what day that is, but back in the day, um, that was a sales tactic to steal groups from other hotels. The sales managers would walk in and read the reader boards and say, this group is here to this week. Let me call them in a couple of weeks and say, hey, how was your experience in San Antonio? I'd love to be your hotel the next time you come in. Um, I mean, yeah, I know that, that's just the way it is. <laughs> that's just the way it was. Um, and so what's that? I'm sure you still could do it, but now everything's probably all, everything's digitally online, anyways. <laughs> um, but also, too, most hotels work well together, so that if I'm sold out, I have a hotel that I would feel comfortable referring to, because you don't want to refer somebody to another hotel and they have a bad experience. Okay, it's almost just like a letter of recommendation. You don't want to ask somebody for a letter of recommendation if you don't already know what that recommendation is going to be. Okay, um, if you don't think that person's going to give you a good glowing recommendation, you probably shouldn't ask that person, okay, because if they're going to be honest, um, you want to make sure you're asking people that will give you that good reference. Um, I don't know why I just said that, <laughs> but anyways, uh, so reader boards, as you are, um, it allows guests to understand where they're going in the hotel, especially if like your meeting space is broken up onto different floors, but not all in one place. You know what? I'm going to add the Westin to our potential uh, hotels because Maria, I love Maria. Um, we'll see if we can go there. I'll call her. All right. So mail and package handling. As mail comes in, we time, we time and date stamp it. If it's letters, we typically at the La Quinta, we had like one of those like old school uh, time clocks where you just slide the letter through and it automatically dates and time stamps it. Um, or... You can have like a, a, a little rubber stamp that says received and then it receives by and what time. And then we want to make sure that we notify the guests that they actually do have mail or a package um, there. Sometimes the guests will actually notify you and say, hey, I'm expecting a package. Can you please be on, on the lookout and let me know when it arrives? Okay. We definitely want to hand sta like stamp that. And we also want to recognize um, it, what the package is for. And so, like, the company that I worked for, Adventures in San Antonio, we would often send packages two to three weeks in advance um, of, you know, all the tchotchke stuff, the lanyards and the name badges and the hats we're going to give away and the pad folios and all that stuff we're going to give away. We'd send it two or three weeks in advance. And we'd note that on there, we let the hotel know. So when it arrives, they don't keep it in their back office. They're not going to need it for three weeks. They can put it somewhere else. Um, and so we want to make sure that we we, rec um, we have that, especially if we are going to be um, coming to the hotel in a, like within a, like two or three weeks. If we get a letter, we want to make sure that that person is either in the hotel as already a registered guest, or they're going to be a registered guest, 
And if they've already checked out, then we might return that letter to, we, would, we, not, we, not, we will not accept, accept that letter. We could return that to the sender because there's no way for us to get that letter to that guest that they've already checked out. And so, um, so all these things, it's not just drop the mail and buy. We want to look at it to make sure real quick that everything is, um, is appropriate. All right, so telecommunications. Most hotels allow long distance and um, domestic calls. Most hotels at least allow domestic calls or local calls. Um, and then uh, your hotels, do you all allow long distance calls as well? We charge. You charge? Okay, how much do you charge? You don't know? Okay. <laughs> by the phone, so they know? Okay, awesome. Um, Facsimiles, what are facsimiles? Raise your hand if you do not know what a facsimile is, and that's okay. I need to keep track of like how many hands go up each year, because I'm sure each year it's gonna increase more and more. Um, a fact, how many of you have heard of a fax before? Okay, so a fax is the short word of saying facsimile, okay? So a facsimile is basically I put the paper in, I dial the number, and the phone rings, and then the, the picture comes up on the other end. The FAX, like a fax machine, yeah, like a fax machine. That's just a short way of saying fax, facsimile, okay? Um, wake up services. The La Quinta, when I was there, we had a little diagram that was included in the night audit package to show that I've highlighted that I've actually entered, manually entered all the wake up calls. Some hotels have it digitalized. You can actually schedule your wake up call from your room, and there's directions in that information directory. If you want a wake up call, dial this number, and then enter the time, and it'll automatically put it in there um, as a digit, as a wake up call. Okay. TDDs. Raise your hand if you do not know what a TDD is. Okay, that's cool. No, that's awesome. That's really cool. So it's basically a telecommunication device that helps people who um, are hearing impaired. Okay. Um, so let's watch a little quick video about that. All right, so we'll go through each one of these really relatively quickly. We talked about the long distance, and um, we can also do room-to-room -room calls um, as well as calls to the front desk, okay? Um, anytime we take a telephone message for a guest, we want to make sure we either, if we can't forward to that particular guest room, um, you know, we can't necessarily, if someone calls the hotel and says, I need, to leave a, I need to leave a room, a message for Mr. Smith, what room is he in? We can't do that. We cannot connect. We can say we can connect you directly to the room. We cannot give that room number out. Same thing with, with the room key, right? And so I'd be happy to connect you. I'd be happy to take a message and deliver it, or I'd be happy to connect you directly to the room, okay? Um, and so the best thing to do is to take a message. Why would you not want to connect the room direct, the call directly to the room? If they're not there. Okay, if they're not there. What if someone who's there that's not supposed to be there? I don't want Mrs. Smith getting mad at me because another female voice answers the phone when she's calling Mr. Smith, okay? And I, I, it's, you don't, I don't want to be that person, right? And so the best thing to do is just take a message. What'd you say? You'll do it on purpose? Oh, wow. Okay, don't go to Alexis Hotel. Or Danny's going to Danny's gonna jack up your rate if you're drunk. And Alexis is going to forward you just to get you in trouble. All right? So, um, so yeah. So, we want, we want to make sure we just take a message and then deliver it to the room. Okay? Um, there's, we, can, might, we might even call the room and just see if anybody's there. Um, to deliver that message and say, hey, we're, I'm down at the front desk. I have a message for you. Stop by any time the next time you're, you're down. Okay. Um, some of the hotels have voice vo voicemails, so you can actually forward them and they can leave a message. You want to make sure that those voicemails are getting deleted um, and, and whatnot. There was, uh, we went, my friend and I went to Orlando last year for, to check out some of, one of the resorts there. And, um, I guess the, the property where we, at, we were at, they called every single day to tell you what activities were happening. 
And so the light was blinking, and I picked it up. It's like, you have 400 messages. And I'm like, do y'all not clear out these messages? Like, that would be part of housekeeping. Like, this person's checked out. Let's get, the like, these messages out. Um, and so having the voicemail get, prevents you from losing that voice, or lo lo losing that message or not getting it to the guest so they can check it directly from their room. We talked about facsimiles already. Typically, faxes are going to come with some kind of a cover sheet. And so that cover sheet tells you what guest they're from. I mean, it's basically like or what, what, the, what guest it's to, the person that it's from, and what the subject of that is. So that cover sheet is almost like the top part of your email address. Like anytime you get an email, that, that documentation up there. Um, and faxes should be considered private, like private communications. Okay, just like a letter or something. We're not going to open somebody's letter when it comes in the mail. Um, well, you shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> but the same thing with a fax. So that's considered private information. We should not be reading the, the guest fax that comes in. Okay. Um, sometimes the hotel might charge to send a fax. Do you guys, do you guys have you, you don't charge to send faxes? Okay. Sometimes it's like, you know, if it's a couple of pages, it's no big deal. If it's like 50 pages, then they might charge. So it kind of just depends. Um, but the faxes do come handy. They come in, in and they come in handy. When I was actually accepting this job, the HR department had sent me to my email, my contract, and I had to get it back to them by a certain date. And so I was somewhere else. I can't remember where I was, but with my family. And so I had to print it out at the business center, sign it, and then have them fax it back. Um, so faxes do come in handy still. Um, they're not antiquated quite yet. Um, wake up services we talked about. Email. So a lot of places will have business centers where they have computers available for the guests to use for email or anything that they, that they need to use that for. The TDD, we just watched that video for. All right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how the housekeeping deals, sorry, the front desk deals with different departments in the hotel. Okay, um, so raise your hand and tell me one of the departments other than housekeeping because it's up here on the board. What's one of the departments in the hotel? Okay, so, oops, that one doesn't work. HR. I heard HR. Engineering. I heard laundry, but laundry is part of housekeeping. Yep. Okay, so the rooms. Sales. The rooms is part of housekeeping. Sales. Good. Sales, restaurant. I'm going to say food and beverage, so F&B. Management. Sorry? Management. Mike okay, Mike. yeah, so the management offices. Maintenance. Engineer. Okay, engineer maintenance, good. Accounting. Security. Good. So we have front office, and actually, okay, yes, we have front office and we have housekeeping, of course. Um, and then the rooms division includes front office housekeeping, also security and um, uniform services, which are what? Ballet, concierge, Ballet, concierge bellmen, those types of um, positions. I think security might even be a group of that uniform services. So why is it important for front office, for the front office and housekeeping to talk to each other? To keep track of status of the room. To make sure we have the status of the rooms are correct, okay? To identify any discrepancies. What is a discrepancy? That's okay. No, what, what I mean, just what, in general, what is a discrepancy? Okay, there's a problem. So there's a difference. Okay, a discrepancy is a difference. So my room sheet says that room 102 is ready to go, but I walk into 102 and the bed is still unmade. There's a discrepancy there. So why is there a discrepancy? I need to figure that out. Why does my, why does my computer show that 102 is vacant ready when it really isn't? What has happened, okay? Um, maybe somebody checked into 102 and they're like, I don't like this room for whatever reason. There's a lot of reasons why people don't like their rooms. They don't like that room. And maybe they pulled the bed cover over. And maybe that's the reason why they don't like the room. And they pulled the bed, the, the, the sheet down or like the, the cover down. And they go to the front desk and they say, I don't like that room. So the front desk changes their room. 
And then they just assume, without somebody going into checking that room, that that person didn't do anything in the room. And so they're like, well, they don't like it, so I'm just going to change it back to vacant ready. And I'm going to reassign them to a different room. Anytime you reassign a guest to a room, even if they've been there for five minutes, you need to have somebody in housekeeping go in to verify that they didn't use the restroom, that they didn't mess up the bed, that they didn't do something that another guest, when they walked in, are going to have issues with. Okay? And so we have those discrepancies. Um, so other ex discrepancies is sometimes the guest, uh, we think the guest is still in the room. But they're still it's still occupied but they've actually left they didn't stop by the front desk they didn't check out and so my report says it's still occupied but housekeeping actually went in there and cleaned the room and it's vacant ready and so if somebody if a guest walks in and wants a room and i look at it, i don't have any rooms available there's a discrepancy there so we want to make sure that those discrepancies are addressed and things now, a lot of that has helped. Uh, technology has helped with a lot of that. So I know at Hotel Emma, I know the Marriott's downtown, the River Center River Walk, um, their property management system is such that all the housekeepers have a iPad. They all have an iPad. They can go in, they can mark that they are done with the room, which then sends a message to their supervisor to then go in and double check the room. And then the supervisor, once they sign off, it automatically updates the room in the property management system. And that way the front desk knows that those rooms are um, ready, vacant, ready to go. And so technology has helped. It's not always right. Um, so again, we always wanna have like a physical check of those rooms. Yes, ma'am. Ready or uh, occupied ready. We'll check it out. Then we'll turn into dirty. Okay. So the room size is like into a dirty room. Okay. Yeah. So even so, technology is wonderful, but it's still required that we have to actually double check technology. Uh, we can't just rely solely on that. Engineering and maintenance. Why is it important for front office to be in communication with engineering and maintenance? Okay, so what kinds of things do engineering and maintenance need to fix? Air conditioning. We live in South Texas. Those ACs better be working. Water leaks, plumbing. Greg, did you say something? Lighting. Paint. Okay. Yeah, the elevator. So not just within the guest room, but also they have to make sure that things are working in the hotel in general. Absolutely. So engineering and maintenance need to be um, need to not notified of what's that? Lights. Absolutely. Now some lights, if it's just a bed bedside lamp, we might have housekeeping have like you know a handful of light bulbs on their cart, and if they notice that a light is out, they can just change that out. There's no really no need to make a massive maintenance request for something that a housekeeper can do in you know three to five seconds um maybe 10 seconds um but if it's a specialty light like these fluorescents up here we can't expect housekeeping to carry fluorescent light bulbs on their carts their carts get bumped their carts you know are, get, are getting moved and so those would be something that would need to be a special request and so we typically again if we're doing more of like a paper style Oftentimes we have what's called those carbon copies. You know what I'm talking about when I talk about carbon copies? Mm -hmm. How many do you do not know what I mean when I say carbon copies? Okay, you remember, have you ever seen where it's like a white piece of paper and then a yellow piece of paper and a pink piece of paper, right? And you write on it and whatever you write, it automatically copies it onto the other pages. That's a carbon copy. So I'm making a carbon copy of that. And so I keep the original. I send the yellow one to maintenance and I keep the pink one for whatever reason. I send the pink one to management, right? And then when that is done, the maintenance people bring me back whatever slip is, is required to show that it's been completed, okay? And then we distribute all that to make sure it's been completed. So we might initiate that. Now, oftentimes, again, things are digitalized. So if we have an email system that we can send an email out to our engineering chief of engineering, um, 
if y'all are not going to pay attention, you're welcome to go do whatever you're doing outside in the classroom, out in the hallway. Okay, okay then stop your conversations. Don't tell me what I'm listening to right now. All right, so revenue centers. Why is it important for front office to communicate with the revenue centers? <laughs> okay, so we get money in. If the property management systems are not communicated like through digitally, through the, the whole property management systems, if you have a system where, um, let's say, you have a restaurant in your hotel and they have to transfer all of those room charges to the front desk to actually post to the accounts, okay? If we have a situation like that, then we need to make sure that those receipts get to the front desk in a timely manner so we can post those charges to those room accounts. Um, if not, then a guest might check out and then we have that late charge situation. And we don't, we wanna to try to avoid that as much as possible, okay? Um, also, if we have large groups in house, oftentimes it's negotiated that they're gonna, like the breakfast is included with that group. So everyone from that group's gonna get um, complimentary breakfast. And the way that we track that is with vouchers. And so everyone, they check in, we either at the front desk or when they check into their, their group in the, um, at their conference or their meeting, they'll get a little envelope and it might have their breakfast vouchers for the time that they're there. And so they need to submit that. And so front desk needs to communicate with the, the, the restaurant to make sure that the, the restaurant knows that front desk is going to expect to see all those vouchers so they can actually post them to their, their accounts and they can post that credit. We want to charge for those breakfasts for our accounting purposes. We want to charge for those breakfasts, but we also want to have those vouchers available to cancel that charge out and basically pay for it. Because the group has either been a negotiated a lower rate or the group is you just we're offering a complimentary breakfast in general. But for our accounting purposes, we want to see that transaction, okay? Um, so other revenue centers like the spa, what other revenue centers do we have? The market, the restaurant, a coffee shop, a bar. Yeah, we could do possibly laundry. Yeah. So there could be where, where we send out laundry for dry cleaning or just laundry services. We can send out for that. Absolutely. The sundries market. Yeah, the sundries market. So all those things are revenue centers that we want to make sure that are communicated with the front desk. Um, and so we can get all those charges posted to the appropriate accounts, okay? Marketing and public relations. So marketing and public relations um, purpose is to promote the hotel within the community. Their role is to promote the, the hotel within the community to spread, you know, I mean, they're the ones that go out and participate in different community events. They're the ones that go out and, um, I don't know, how many of y'all are in, in the marketing public relations in hotels? Okay, good. So energy, so you said blue energy? Yeah. That's what you call it through through Hilton, or that, was that specific for Palacio? Okay, cool. But then like the the team members are gonna go and out and do volunteering and things like that. Yeah. So you're spreading good promotions about the hotel within the community. Absolutely. That's called blue okay. energy. That well for for the Hilton Palacio. Yeah, that's a, that's that's cool. So that that way when you go out, people recognize. Yeah, you recognize you're Hilton and you're out there doing your thing. Absolutely. Good, good. Um, they may go out to different community events, um, different things that are happening um, throughout the, the community. So there's lots of different things that, that the marketing and the public relations do. Um, they might be the ones who are responsible for giving out gift certificates to nonprofits. Um, so they'll identify which nonprofits and they make a request. You know, can we accommodate this request of giving a one night stay and breakfast in our restaurant to this silent auction or to this raffle drawing or for whatever, okay? Um, so why is it important for front office to know what's going, what marketing and promotion public relations are doing? Okay, so they can sell it, absolutely. So if they put together a package of like a Valentine's Day package, 
then they can sell that package. Good. If somebody walks in with a gift certificate and, you know, it's from the event that just happened last weekend or whatever, um, the marketing and, and public relations want to make sure that they communicate that with the front office manager so that way when somebody walks in with a gift certificate you're not like yeah right that looks fake <laughs> i'm not going to honor that okay and so they want to communicate those things and what to expect so if somebody does come with a gift certificate there needs to be a number they have to have the original gift certificate they cannot use a photocopy so all these different things that we can we can communicate with the front office to make sure that that process is run smoothly okay Sometimes the front office is responsible for coordinating different guest services, whether that's delivering amenities to the rooms, whether it is um, just providing basic information of the area, especially if you're at a select service hotel, you basically become the concierge um, at the front desk. And so it's important for you to get out and know what's happening in your city so that you can make recommendations, okay? Some guests, they might need special equipment um, while they're making reservations or during the uh, occupancy. How many of you in hotels have ever experienced anything like that? Jacqueline. Uh, oh yeah, so the converter for their electric, electrical appliances. You might need an adapter for the walls. Good, so having that available um, is definitely helpful. If you, how many of you have never traveled internationally and have no idea what we're talking about? Okay, that's awesome. So basically, the plugs that are in Europe do not look like the plugs that are in America. The plugs that are, you know, throughout the world, uh, Australia, wherever, the plugs are not the same. And so I can't just literally plug my phone into the wall. I have to have a converter. And oftentimes, it, uh, it's a kind of a big boxy looking thing, and it has the different types of adapters, and you plug that in, and then you can plug your actual regular plug into that. And the reason behind that is the, wad the wattage and the volts, okay, how the electricity is used. Um, and so it's important to have, that's a good, to have that um, for somebody if they forgot to pack it, because oftentimes we think we pack everything. And there's inevitably something we're going to I saw forget. I something like that in Guadalajara. Uh huh. Um, I figured while well, like that part of Mexico would have been like just standardized. Yeah. Like, 110 volt, whatever. You know, there was very different uh, adapter, like ele electrical, electrical outlets. outlets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so if you need that, I mean, I I think I have one that I bought. I can't remember when I bought. It, I think back in 2013. And it actually has USB ports on it. So now I can, I don't even need to have my little cube. I can just plug my phone directly into that. Um, so there's, you know, there, there's a variety of different adapters that you can have. Now, if we check that out to a guest. We want to note that in our account so that we can make sure that we get that back. And if we don't get it back, we want to make sure we charge them for it. Um, okay. uh, sometimes different supplies too, like shampoo, not shampoo, that's already in the room, just kidding. Like shaving cream, <laughs> razors, which I don't know if you ever use a hotel razor, they are not the best quality. Um, yeah, that toothbrush, man, that is, that is premium quality toothbrushes. So yeah, but, and like the toothpaste, if you forget, often, yeah, sometimes like the toothpaste is like little packets um, of toothpaste. You have really good, okay, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, back when I took a trip in high school, we went to, I think it was the Four Seasons, back then it was the Four Seasons, it was like the best ever um, in Houston, downtown Houston, the catwalk, mm -hmm. we went to the mall. Um, they had one time use swimsuits. If you brought to pack up your swimsuit, they would give you a, one time you still Interesting. I was like, what? <laughs> the, uh, the Westin downtown and the West, I think it's the Westin brand in general. So the Westin is all about being really physically fit and, and, and health and well being. And so they, that's something I found out was really, really interesting one time when I, I did a tour of the Westin um, down here. Well, they have like a special like menu that is more of a healthier menu. 
Um, but then they also, if you don't want to travel with your fitness, like your workout clothes, they have a partnership with New Balance. And so I, I think it was like five or ten dollars. Maybe it's more than that. But you can basically rent a pair of shoes and shorts and a, and a T-shirt um, so that you don't have to pack it. So think about if you're traveling on business, if you are like a, a pretty good runner, if you like to go out and be active. But if you're traveling on business, I don't know if a lot of you travel frequently, it's better to not have to check a bag. If I can keep everything in a carry-on, then it facilitates that process. And so if I don't have to waste room in my carry-on for my gym shoes and my gym clothes, and I can check that out from the hotel, that can be something that would encourage me to continue staying at a Westin hotel. And then they get those clothes back and they clean them and they refresh them and then they can get ready to go and, and for the next person. So I thought that was really interesting that they have that as an additional guest service. Of course, it's not something you pay for. It's not a free service, but at least it would be something that would, if you are somebody that that would appeal to, that could, um, that could lead to you selecting Weston as your only go-to hotel. Like I only want to ever stay at Weston hotels because I have this op uh, option as an availability. So that's really cool. Front desk, guest relations. We are the face of the hotel. This is where people come when there's an issue. This is where people come when they, the first, the first impression of the hotel. Um, and so again, using anything that we have uh, in our toolbox of, you know, our information directory, our positive attitudes, our smiles, our welcoming um, demeanor, all of that is gonna be com come into play when we deal with guest relations because we're gonna have problems. Things are gonna go wrong. They cannot be perfect 100% of the time. That's just not realistic. And so how we deal with those and those guest recovery um, efforts can make all the difference. And so those guest relations, um, developing those skills is something that's gonna be really important. So we have a couple of different types of complaints that guests are gonna have. And we're going to go through these relatively quickly, okay? Uh, mechanical, attitudinal, service-related, and unusual. So what do you think, raise your hand, what do you think mechanical concerns, complaints, what, what, would, what would entail a mechanical complaint? The AC being okay, anything that has to do with equipment, right? The AC has gone out, there's plumbing. So who would we talk to about a mechanical issue? Maintenance, Maintenance and engineering. Okay, attitudinal, let's talk about that one, okay? Attitudinal is when guests may feel complaints when they feel that they have been poorly treated by a hotel staff. So if somebody has been rude to them, you know, somebody didn't really, I don't know, they rubbed them the wrong way, I don't know, right? These are attitudinal things. So we definitely, how many of you have ever had this experience where you walk up to something and you have employees that are yelling at each other okay the guest should never experience that the guest should never experience that and so that might be something that might be brought to your attention as a manager i walked up the front desk and the two people at the front desk were they were yelling and arguing and completely rude to each other and it affected my check-in process it affected my impression of the hotel okay and so how are we going to address that as a manager? How would you address that? I'll speak to the employees. Good. You first definitely want to thank them for bringing that to your attention. Thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. I apologize you had to experience that. I will, um, I will personally go and speak to those uh, team members. Um, to ensure that this doesn't happen again, to identify what the problem is and make sure it doesn't happen again, okay? So sometimes that's as simple as all it needs. Now, if that person is just like, what are you gonna do for me, okay? <laughs> well, then we have another issue that we're dealing with. This person is complaining because they're expecting something for free, right? Mm -hmm. Can I give them a free room night because of that? Mm -hmm. Probably not. You know, you might send them up a, a bottle of wine or a fruit tray or a, a fruit and cheese plate. Thank so sorry, for, for, sorry for the uh, inconvenience that you experienced. Um, you might send them, you know, enjoy complimentary breakfast in the hotel. 
Exactly. Right. So true. Absolutely. Arguing or is this how valid is how valid is the complaint? Right. And so if that's the case. Your credibility is shot with me the minute they're expecting something. something. Absolutely. I agree. And so the, oftentimes, like if you do have a legitimate complaint, if I have a legitimate complaint, I am not going to uh, initially ask for anything for free. Right. That's just like you said. That kind of that kind of. Um, ruins your credibility and kind of shows your motive of why you're complaining. Um, yes, ma'am. Oh, absolutely. No, of course. Of course. And so that definitely could be a legitimate concern. So just because someone says it doesn't mean we're not necessarily going to not address it. We're still going to address it. However, we might. I'm not going to give them a room night that's a $200 room night. I'm not going to give that for free. I might give them complimentary breakfast, you know, a breakfast buffet that's going to cost me cost wise, you know, five, 10 bucks per yeah. person. Yeah. I'm not going to give them everything and anything that they want. I'm still going to like relate. I'm going to figure out what was the problem and I'm going to compensate them accordingly. It's not just like, Oh, here, take this, yeah. you know? So you want to make sure that it's, 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 uh, the recovery matches and is appropriate to what the concern was. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So going right into our service related, right? So if a guest comes and says, "Oh my gosh, David was the rudest front desk person ever." That manager is going to be like, okay, <laughs> something, either, either David's not having a good day or this person is just trying to get something, right? And so it could be that, hey, David, this so-and-so, and I could be like, yeah, because this is what she said to me, and I told her exactly what I thought about her. Okay, David, we probably can't tell people exactly what we think about them. That's a coaching moment, okay? We can't say yes. What you really want to say stays inside your head, and what you say is not exactly what you want to say. You have to um, do that sometimes. We've all been in that situation at that moment. At some the point. opposite of the meme that says, "I can stay quiet with what I want to say or am thinking, but my face really shows." Yes, exactly. So your facial expressions have to also reflect that as well. Okay, um, and so service-related complaints are things that happen. You know, maybe. There's hair in our bathroom. Maybe there's we found trash under our bed. Maybe there's um, some clothes left in the closet that weren't that weren't removed when housekeeping cleaned the room. Uh, maybe um, what's that? There's a bug in your food. Okay. Maybe um, in room dining took 45 minutes to an hour to get your food up to the room. You could have just gone down to the you know, down to the restaurant in that time. So all these service related things are things that we have to take serious, but we also need to look into them and and figure out. So again, typically, you want to thank someone for bringing it to your attention. You want to apologize for it happening, and you want you need to sound sincere. Okay, you, you can't you can't sound sarcastic. Uh, you can't roll your eyes because you just think somebody's coming to get something for free. So you have to be sincere, apologize that it happened, and then tell them what you're going to do about it. Tell them what you are going to do, and then follow up later. Um, if you said you know, if you said you're going to send something up to the room, um, you know, let me send a complimentary dessert up to your room or tomorrow. You had an issue with in-room dining tonight. Tomorrow, let's, we're going to go ahead and comp your breakfast. What would you like for breakfast? I'll place that order for you, and we'll have it ready for the room tomorrow. Okay, so oftentimes people just want to have some justification that they are upset and somebody to, um, to um, not, I don't want to say appreciate. They want to validate that they have a concern, okay? The last one is unusual, okay? The last one is unusual, these are things that are without our, uh, I've been on vacation and it's been raining every single day. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Construction work on site. Um, I don't know. Maybe next time I'll pray a little harder. I don't know. Okay. 
Usually, yeah, give them an umbrella. The, usually the unusual ones are the ones that it's really hard not to be sarcastic about in your response. Because typically, you're thinking to yourself, what? Like, how in the world do you even think that this is my fault or my, my problem, you know? And so the unusual requests um, are, are complaints are usually things that um, are a little bit, you know, the weather related, there's construction outside, um, things that you have zero control over. So Michelle Landeros gave us a great example. So the hotel that's over closer to the bottom exchange, nightclub, they put earbuds or they put um, earplugs in every single room. And a little note saying, yes, we realize that we are next to a nightclub and it's going to be loud. We are in the entertainment district. Please enjoy these earplugs if you are unable to sleep in the, you know, with the music. And so they're being proactive about that. And so all of these complaints, we can go back to that transaction file. We can go back to that logbook. We can go back to our guest service um, surveys. Um, and we can look at all of those things to identify where are we having a lapse in our service so that we can correct it from even happening in the first place. Okay, And that's how we identify those complaints. Um, so that we can make sure that we can be proactive instead of reactive, okay? We don't want to constantly be reactive because then people are going to start blasting us on social media. People are going to start giving us bad reviews. We have to respond to those. We have to react to those. We want to be proactive. We want to figure out what's going wrong so we can correct it before it goes wrong, okay? Um, let's see. Handling complaints. We want to listen, okay? If somebody's coming up to your to your front desk and they are obviously upset by visually upset, if they're like storming up to the front desk, they have this horrible scowl on their face, and they want you to basically be ready to take care of their problem and resolve their problem. Yes, Luis. Here we have actually asked uh, something that is called Learn. Okay. Learn module. Which basically is, you know, handle like a complaint the way it works. It's, that's going to be learn, empathize, apologize, react, and notify. Okay. Those are five steps you have to follow every time there's like a guest complaint. So learn is learn about what their problem is. Learn, learn about the problem. Empathize. Empathize. So you want to have empathy for this person. You don't want you want basically put yourself in their shoes. How would you feel if you had hair in your bathroom? How would you feel if you walked into uh, if it took an hour for you to get your, your food for room service, okay? So empathize and then apologize. apologize. Good. React. React. So how are you going to fix it? Notify. And notify. Who do you notify? Manager. manager okay. Manager Excellent. Very good. Okay. So learn about it. Empathize with them. Apologize. React to it. And then notify the people that need to be notified. Very good. And that pretty much kind of covers up a lot of all of these things here. So we want to make sure that all of these things are happening. We definitely want to log anything in our logbook or our transaction file so that people can follow up later. It may happen within, you have 30 minutes left of your shift. And so you're not going to actually see how that was resolved. Um, and so you're going to write it in the logbook and say, it has not been resolved. This is what the matter was when I left. And the next person who comes in, you might have a, a verbal conversation, but it's also in the logbook as well. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns about Chapter 6. All right. So Chapter 7 deals with all about security and safety. So we'll go over Chapter 7 on Thursday, and we're going to start class about 11 to 11.15 on Thursday. All right. So I'm going to go get pizza um, for the class before. Is pepperoni okay? Meat? I can do a veg, couple of veggies. I don't know if I can do pine. I'll do one pineapple. I'll do one pineapple.